What's going on, everybody? Welcome to World's Finest, brought to you by the Comic Collectors Guild. I am your host. You guys know me as the Superman. My name is Jake, and joining me as always, my man Lee Lawson. Lee, how are you today, sir? What's up, buddy? I am doing fantastically well, my friend, because we have an awesome show tonight, guys. If you guys are a fan of sci-fi thrillers, then this is the show for you. We have the writer and director of the upcoming movie, Mystery Deep, with us, one Mr. Gordon Humphrey. Gordon, thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you guys so much for having me. Oh man, very excited to have you. Listen, we know you're very deep into you know pre-production on your film, Mystery Deep, so we really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, before we really get into this, Gordon, for our audience, why don't you uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind? Sure, um, I'm 47 years old. I'm from a small town in Virginia called Culpeper. Um, father of two, uh, engaged to a very beautiful woman, Laura. Um, I was educated at the University of Virginia where I um, studied uh, computer science. And uh, since then I've gone on to do a bunch of cool technology projects, but nothing cooler than the musical projects that I've been a part of. So I spent the better part of my life uh, producing and writing music and um, very blessed to have been around a, a bunch of pros that have been doing some really cool stuff. and. Um, was really fortunate over the years to be around um, many aspects of the entertainment field. But um, what I really um, took an interest to was the uh, entertainment field in terms of uh, movie making and um, that kind of thing. So um, kind of started out with music videos and, and learned a little bit about what it takes to produce great images and tell stories and that kind of thing. And it's just kind of evolved over the years to where now, um, it's it's kind of all led me to where I am now, and uh, it's my goal to make this incredible movie. And um, I'm very humbled a bit at how big of an undertaking is, it has become. But um, it's like uh, Martin Scorsese said, uh, you know, if all this the machinery makes you feel uh, uh, intimidated, good, wake up and do it anyway. So love it. I'm gonna do it anyway. There love it, go. love it. As a guy who did theater in school myself i i can fully appreciate like all the effort and time and and all that it takes to you know tell these stories and really at the end of the day whether you're a writer or producer you're a you're a storyteller and so i definitely appreciate that obviously mystery deep is your upcoming film why don't you tell us without giving up too much kind of the, the <laughs> overview of what that film's about well the <clears throat> the story is, is really cool it's uh it's based partially on my life uh, growing up here in uh, Culpeper and uh, took elements of things that I thought were really cool and interesting about my childhood and things that happened along the way. And it's a story that has kind of written itself over the years. And literally when I say it's, it's probably been 10, 15 years in, in the making, it really has. Um, but uh, just really took on a serious kind of focus here in the last three or four years. But it's about a, a small group of uh, young people that uh, they live in a small town that's been ravaged by unemployment and things seem to be turning uh, in the wrong direction. And they come across some clues that lead them to believe that uh, all of the uh, freak accidents and unexplained phenomenon are stemming from uh, an old abandoned quarry that up in the woods. And uh, they set out to find out what's going on and the rest you'll have to watch the movie for. <laughs> oh, like wow, it. man. That sounds awesome. I mean, I'm already kind of, I'm, I was leading in already. I was waiting, you yeah. know, you, you, <laughs> you, you were you were drawing me in. So what kind of inspired you to make this, you know what I mean? Uh, the film, I guess, a little bit. So I've always been a geek. And um, obviously I grew up loving films such as Star Wars and Jaws and E.T. and Alien. Um, and uh, Great films. All great yeah. films. Yeah. <clears throat> and without really knowing it, I've been a student, even as a young person, I was studying um, certain camera angles, way of, ways of telling stories that are more suspenseful and little things that filmmakers do to help draw the audience in and keep their, their attention. And so um, when I was shooting music videos, uh, I found it such a challenge to keep the viewer entertained for three minutes during a song. And so um, now it's the, 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 the body of work is a two hour film and trying to keep the audience engaged from the first second to the last second is, is such a huge challenge, but it really is. It's a, for a creative person, it's a, just a, it's a field of dreams. It's, it's, there's nothing more you can ask for that better than two hours to just 
be creative, be creative, be creative, and um, and help tell an amazing story. So, but uh, I've always been a sci-fi fan, and so what I did is I took these elements of my childhood, things that stood out to me as as a young person that I really thought were was cool, or there was times when I was scared about this, or um, and it, it, things that I would go off the the quarry that's in the the film is actually the quarry that I grew up beside, and so we wove it into a very interesting story, I think, and some very, very cool twists and turns. And um, I really, it's, it's my goal to make it the most successful and entertaining low budget indie sci-fi film ever. There you yeah. go. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure. And I think it's really cool when you can pull from your own personal life or, or things that are personal to you, because it makes you that much more, I guess have more compassion for it because it's part of you. You know what I mean? It it really is a way of expression of a branch of yourself, uh, which I appreciate. Is this film, I have to ask, like set in a certain period of time as far as like a decade? And if so, you know, why that de that particular, you know, point in time? Yeah. So the going back to uh, my experience in music, music has always been a passion for me. Um, just growing up, uh, grew up very poor and, um, it, music was always uh, just kind of a, um, a safe haven for me. I would always find myself either listening to music or writing music. And it always was a way of just kind of dealing with whatever life was throwing at me at that time. And so fast forward to my adult life and producing music, <clears throat> my experience with music has kind of led me to, hey, how can we marry the best of music with the best of entertainment and movie making? And to me, there was no better uh, era than the 80s. Um, the 80s were absolutely the most amazing time for a young person to grow up because the music was brand new. The MTV was, was just becoming very popular. And the marriage of visuals to music was very new at that time, where or maybe not so much new, but the, the creative process around putting visuals around a soundtrack was new um, mm -hmm. and still to this day i feel like people are still discovering new ways of marrying music with motion pictures and unfortunately since the 80s i feel like uh movie making has kind of lost that a little bit you don't see a lot of movies that have a very heavy soundtrack like miami vice or top gun or footloose flash dance purple rain um those movies were made great in part by the great soundtrack that they had. So so true, yeah, so very yeah. true, man. I mean, you just named some awesome ones right there. I mean, fantastic so, yeah. ones. So this this film certainly draws on uh, influences such as Stranger Things, and there's a number of other uh, uh, cool <clears throat> programs that are out now. But what I hope to do is to remarry great music with a great story. So well, what, you were describing that I'll, and then you actually went on to name those classic soundtracks. You know what I mean? I can't wait with your musical background and now you're, yeah. you're dipping yourself into this film. I can't wait to see how you use this music and juxtaposed against other films that are in there. I can't really, it's going to be exciting. I'm yeah. sure you're going to do a fantastic job with it. I guess. So, you know, as, as I mentioned, you are the writer of this also. So what is challenging or what have you found challenging? I know you're just kind of really in the beginning stages here. Yeah. What do you think will be the most challenging thing about bringing this script to life, you think? I mean, so, so one thing that uh, over the last few years, um, I started a local talent show called Culpepper House Talent. And what, was, what I've learned over those years is that there really are just amazing people in our midst. Even in a small town like this, there are just some amazingly talented people and a lot of people are just sitting there waiting for the opportunity to, to become great and mm -hmm. um, or the opportunity to show that they're great. And it seems like the more and more um, I help someone, I'll, I'll find somebody that's talented in a particular way. Up until now, it's mostly been music. Um, I feel like they thrive when they're given the opportunity. And so this entire film is going to be shot with uh, actors and actresses and crew members from Virginia. And the large majority of those folks are going to be here from um, the Culpeper area. So there's some from the Tidewater area, <clears throat> some from Northern Virginia, uh, and we're still casting right now. But uh, my, my goal is to try to make this a Virginia production and um, try to find some diamonds in the rough. So 
um, it's when you're starting out your first film, you can tell everybody what a great director you are, what a great storyteller you are, but you have to prove it your first time. And so it's my goal to find as many diamonds in the rough out here and to show people that we really can make a great film and you don't need a hundred million dollars to do it. Oh man. I bet. Uh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you yeah. see companies like Bloomhouse that make hits off of small budgets and, and, and knock it out of the park and, you know, coming from, I'm, I'm from Orange, Virginia, so just right neighbors to you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of talent out here. I mean, it'll be, it, that's awesome that you're keeping it close to home because, you know, there's, I mean, even people like, you know, Brad Pitt and things like, they're from small towns that, you know, you would never guess like, oh, there's one of the most talented actors ever there. You know what I mean? So. You just don't know. You never know. You exactly. Never know. Exactly. Um, so uh, with Mystery Deep, what is your, I guess, target audience or who would you say, would be like an ideal if you're if you're in a certain genre of movie who would be the the target audience for for mystery deep so in the beginning i, I kind of had this conversation with myself because i i'm a fan of so many different styles of movie um but it seems like the ones that have impacted my life the most are the ones that um not necessarily were were g-rated but not r-rated um so it's going to be kind of a family fun um film that's kind of uh Analogous to something Steven Spielberg would have done in his early like a, days, Amblin, like an Amblin Entertainment, Amblin film. Entertainment that kind of what it reminds me of, like a Goonies yeah. or a Gremlins or an ET, Goonies. so to speak. Yeah, so I feel like that that bar has slipped a little bit over the years. Like, uh, what's a what's a PG thirteen production might have been back in the eighties, might have been an R rated film or whatever. So, this will probably have a little bit more uh, teeth to it than a. 1980s pg-13 production but um my goal is to make it uh great for all audiences and uh but still offer a lot of thrills and excitement and scares and uh, a lot of stuff that uh, people uh even older folks can enjoy awesome man uh, real quick i meant to ask you this earlier you, you said this is kind of based on you know not based on you know around Culpeper being in a small town. Are we, should we be on the lookout for anybody? Are there any characters that are based on other people that we might've known from, so, <laughs> or that you knew back in the day? So my attorney says, I have to say all characters <laughs> are, any, any resemblance to any character or name is absolutely coincidental. And I'm gonna stick with that. There you there go. You go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. That's so cool. So you had mentioned, I mean, I would imagine, you know, uh, of films, you, you mentioned some awesome films that, that, that inspired you in the past. Um, you said Alien, I guess, the, and uh, some other ones like that, and the Amblin Entertainment one. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's really cool. And I can't wait to see what you're going to do with this. I mean, the, it's, it's going to be really exciting, I guess. Is there a time frame that we probably should maybe be looking out for maybe when this might be? I mean, I know we're still getting in the pre-production stages and all, but yeah. when this might be released or? So uh, we are starting filming of a 10 minute segment of the film um, and uh, late October, um, maybe a November time frame, And my goal is to release that 10 minutes of the, the film, which will be the first 10 minutes of the movie to kind of give people a sense for what the movie is going to be. And um, after that, once that's put out, we also use it as kind of a promotional piece or whatever, again, because a lot of people still, I, even my friends, I don't think they really know what to expect. And um, as amazing as I know the film's going to be, I have to show it to them first. So mm -hmm. this this 10 minute uh, teaser is just to kind of show people like this really is uh, a legit film. And I don't care that we don't have a big Hollywood budget. Like there's so much you can do with just being creative and pulling in the right people, putting them in the right places. Um, I really do. Uh, it's 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 my intention to shock people with what you can do if you just refuse to I, I tell people that are involved in the film all the time as long as you don't let a piece of mediocre film or a substandard shot hit the final cut then you're, you're going to win as long as what, everything that you put on the final cut is amazing it, no one can take that away from you so exactly. um just so wanted to be a, an amazingly entertaining film and we'll shoot for as long as it takes to, until it is just a great, great film. So, but the goal is to release it uh, next December, uh, Christmas time frame. Hopefully, this COVID stuff will have yeah. gone by the wayside by then, or at least 
offers people an opportunity to go to the theater and see it. Um, I know we're going to plan a big premiere here in Culpeper and uh, maybe in a couple other spots where we shoot. Wow. And um, so, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's really exciting. I just, I, I could talk about it all night long, but, uh, but it's going to be amazing. You have my word. I tell you what, man, you're on the right track with your mindset. I absolutely love, you know, the positivity in, and I think that's really start if you have the confidence and you have the passion to know, you know, what your target is and what you're going for, you know, you're, if you aim for the stars, you're, you're going to get there. You know what I mean? So I definitely appreciate that mindset. Uh, obviously you mentioned some of like the Spielberg films, Goonies, which are classics. Did you really get inspiration from any particular filmmaker or, or a previous film Absolutely. that you saw? It was like, Hey, like I want to make a movie like this guy. You know what I mean? Well, I'll never forget the first time uh, I went to see the empire strikes back in the theater. I was young, young kid. And I actually saw The Empire Strikes Back before I saw Star Wars. I was late to the, the party. Um, so I didn't really know what to expect. But I just remember the the lightsaber fight scene between Luke and Darth Vader uh, on the, in the Bespin Cloud City. And while I didn't realize why it was so breathtaking at the time, I look back on that as probably one of the most amazing pieces of, of sci-fi film ever, just from the use of color in the background to... The, how much development they spent on the characters and the costumes, the wardrobes, the sets, the, the camera angles. It's just, there's so much uh, that George Lucas did with his films um, that are just, they're baked into everything I do. Uh, and I, I wouldn't say that he's my favorite of all time, but probably he was my earliest influence. And uh, Steven Spielberg, I felt like uh, kind of took the baton from, from George Lucas and, went on to do some incredible stuff with Poltergeist, E.T., you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark, I think is probably one of the best popcorn films of all time. For uh, sure. It really is just such a great film. So, and and since then, I, there's some more mature filmmakers. Uh, Michael Mann is, is somebody that I really, really admire. Um, his film, but probably not his most popular, but his film Collateral with Jamie Foxx and Tom Cruise um, to me, great it was just movie. a great, great yeah. movie, and it just made the most of the use of kind of darkness and um, putting light in the right places to kind of make each scene very interesting. And um, I have studied uh, Michael Mann's work quite a, quite a bit, and you're sure to see some of that in Mystery Deep. So the the thing that I think most uh, I, I watch a million great movies, but I also probably watch three million bad movies because I want to. Oh yeah, I want to learn where the the pitfalls are. Why why did this idea that seems so great why did it fall short? And um, one of those is lighting. And the one thing that I know that is that between sound and lighting, those are the two main areas I think that on low budget films they get overlooked. And it's the one two areas that I promise you won't be overlooked in Mystery Deep. It's so cool, man. I mean, it sounds like you got it ready you know it sounds like you have everything in place in order yeah. to make this a fantastic movie and absolutely so you, yep you had mentioned uh, real quick this is just curious about your opinion on this you had mentioned you know spielberg was uh took the baton from uh george lucas and i'm just curious now because i've got somebody in mind if you had to say a, a director out there right now that was kind of making films kind of like how lucas or, and spielberg were making them in the 80s what director would you say is maybe doing the closest thing to what they were doing? And I'm, I'm so, just curious to hear your thoughts so as a lover this, of cinema. Oh, absolutely. Um, this may uh, make some people upset, and, and I, he's not perfect, but uh, I really, really like J.J. Abrams. That's um, exactly. That's J.J. Abrams. Uh, Good answer, sir. <laughs> is, yeah, is a badass. And, yeah, that uh, is. I don't, I, I'm mad at him at some things he did with his Star Wars, uh, um, you know, what he did with Star Wars. I, I loved most of what he did, but um, I wish I was there in the room with him and could have coached him a little bit. Said, don't <laughs> do that right there. Please don't do that. Right. But, well, um, I'm still waiting on Disney to call me to direct the next uh, uh, Star Wars film. So, hey, man, um, you never know. You, you never, never know, know what might happen just after this 10 minutes piece that you do. Absolutely. Here for months, you, know. you know what I mean? Um, so that'd I'm be awesome. To get to you, I need to get you to do a Superman film. I don't know. I'll have to show you some stuff after, but I got to do But uh, I would I'd be actually off the top, too. One thing, a movie that we talked about, I loved when you talked about the score and like the sound of a movie. One movie that came out in this past year that 
me and Lee actually reviewed and we talked about that it, I think really shows uh, the importance of like good sound is Joker. Um, that Absolutely. score in that movie was literally a character in that film. Like that, it pulled you all the way through. You got the 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 gravitas of the scene strictly off of the score. I, I told Lee, you could close your eyes and just listen to the score, and you could almost tell whether it's an intense scene, you know, a sad scene, uh, uh, an angry scene. I mean, it was so beautifully done into a person that. Uh, like Hans Zimmer, or John Williams, like their impact on cinema gets so under, like as amazing as they are, you know, they get so overlooked be- of how important they are. Is there a particular composer or a particular score in a movie that you were really like, wow, like this is this is this is this is special? Well, I think that's a great example. Um, there were some amazing performances, like uh, Phoenix's uh, yes. performance as the Joker just can't be. It can't be overstated yeah. how amazing that was. But I think it's a great example of a film that if it had a different soundtrack, oh, yeah. that film would not have been received the same way no. that it was. I, I really think they did a masterful job of keeping the mood very grim and and slow and brooding and, and just really fantastic. I, I totally agree with that. But I just, um, I know there's a lot of great composers out there, but there's, there's no one like John Williams to me and um, the, the work that he's done, it just, amazing so and it's very um humbling when you sit down to make a movie and uh, i think a lot of filmmakers that don't have a background in composing or producing music there's a a bunch of ways of getting pre-recorded music and pulling it into your film and um i noticed that i i looked into doing some of that other than some of the, the the songs from the 80s that we will be featuring in the film um, when I need a specific mood for something, I had to sit down and actually say, well, this is going to be for this scene and I needed to compose it myself. And it's very, it's much more difficult creating a mood when you have to start from a blank slate. And it just, I've had so much more respect for people like John Williams that have just been doing it over and over again. Um, and just having to go through the process that, that I have of uh, putting together some of the scores for, for this and still a lot more work to go. It's uh, just such a huge undertaking. And um, it's probably one of the secrets of great filmmaking is like you can put a great picture in front of the, the camera, you can tell a great story, but without that soundtrack and score, it's a totally different uh, vibe and um, it really affects how the film is received. Well, we've got to know that with you, like I said before, I'm just saying it again, with your musical background, the, the music that's going to be used in this, I mean, will be just fantastic. You know, I can't I can't wait to be able to see exactly what you create with it. Uh, you know, and just the teases that you've dropped over the past few months, you know what I mean? Little teases of here and little things that you've done for, for Mystery Deep, um, just through social media and things like that. I mean, have just whetted the appetite, you know, just can't wait. I appreciate that, Lee. Yeah, really it's going to be really good. Can't wait. Well, it's going to be a, a, it's my goal. I've always thought that the mark of a great movie is um, not that there haven't been movies that have done it differently, but my favorite films have been those that you sit down and before you can even put your hand in the the popcorn, something's happening that has grabbed you and pulled yeah. you in. So um, I don't intend on having much dead space uh, in the film at all. I like all. that. It's, it's like going to start it. immediately and it's not going to stop until the last second. So. Awesome. I like it. Well, we appreciate you taking some time to talk about, you know, Mystery Deep. We're super excited. Uh, I don't know who I need to bribe to maybe get a part in this thing or, you know, <laughs> order a water bottle or something. We should talk. Or we should talk. But uh, we really appreciate you taking some time. And, uh, you know, obviously, guys, go see this film. It's going to be masterful. We're going to keep you up to date with, you know, when things start filming, when it wraps, where and when you can go see it. And uh, we're really, really excited and, and truly believe it's going to be just awesome. So thank you again. And uh, if there's anything we can do on our end, we're, we're, we're all on board with it. Indeed. Well, thank you guys so much for having me and supporting the film. And I'll definitely keep you guys uh, up to date. And maybe we can uh, get you guys on set a few times and do some broadcasts from the set. And yeah, yeah. we love it, we man. Put you in a, in a scene or two. There you go. There you go. Sounds great to us. We're there. Count us in. Count us in. Hey, you heard it live, guys. If we're not in there, (laughs) that's right. There you go. But uh, no, we appreciate it, guys. Check out our website, www.comiccollectorsguild.com. Hit that subscribe and like button. And uh, we're going to come with you with a lot more Mystery Deep as well as some other movie news. Uh, Until next time, Lee, it's been awesome, man.
Keep on it, guys. Gordon, thank you, guys. Everybody. What's the matter with you kids? You've never seen a spaceship before?